right into a couple of fun text effects that we can do in Photoshop. And let's dive right in. This one is gonna be, we're gonna do all of these at letter, horizontal, 300. We'll do CMYK for these. Pretending we're going to print them, white is fine, hit create. Okay, we should have downloaded already this flower um, image. I keep mine in a folder, make sure you know where yours is. Mine's in documents, which mine lives on an iCloud. If you're working in the Adobe Cloud, make sure you know where those files are and that you're in your Adobe Cloud and not someone else's. These are public library computers, keep that in mind. Um, and then it's always good to back up your cloud onto some form of external hard drive, flash drive scenario, weekly, maybe even daily if you're doing a lot of work because you just never know when something will happen. Okay, so I'm gonna hit place. I'm gonna zoom out command minus to make my screen a little easier to see. And then I'm going to not hit shift just scale up to get this guy to kind of take over the screen and hit return oh, and he was kind of a couple of pixels off so let me move him up I just use my arrows <clears throat> all right next I'm going to type in the word florist it could be any word that you are doing this is typography also so keep in mind you know I'm telling you one thing but You'd really want to dive into your typography before you started doing any of the masks that we're about to do, although it will be slightly editable. I'm going to scale mine up just a little bit that way, but then I'm going to come over. You could use this screen. That's fine. And we're going to look for Bellow script. If you don't have that, find a um, heavy script, a thick script. You may have to um, unselect some of these things. It's annoying that that automatically does all caps. I don't want it to be all caps. Um, and font size, we're going to say 260, but you would play with that again. You're not going to know the amount when you're actually starting to develop. You're, you're, you know, you want to play around until you get something really cool. And at this point, I was pretty happy with liking the way this looked I wanted to use this flower and this flower to get a little bit more dimension always trying to compete with what Canva secretaries could do okay <clears throat> now a few things we can do we can command click on the text thumbnail and we're gonna kind of fudge this guy using masks but I want my text I need my text at first, but we're not gonna actually use this text. So I'm gonna command click, that always gives us little dancing ants. I'm gonna make a new folder, and while this is selected, I'm gonna hit the mask. You may say, well, what is that doing? Kind of nothing, especially if I hide this guy. But in theory, you can see even by this thumbnail, it created a mask, mask that looks just like this font. <clears throat> Okay, inside this folder, make sure it's inside it and not just below it, Ins and then hide my florist layer. Inside this folder, I'm gonna call this white uh, text. We always wanna kind of label things as we go. And then I'm just gonna dump white into this entire thing. And because this mask is here, it's gonna look just like the white. Now our font is not editable. Are there other ways you could do this? Yes, of course there are. But this is the way that I like based on how we're gonna do the shadow. Um, but you could throw a mask on top of this guy. You could use some of the command click to get you know, cleaner edges other ways. So just keep this in mind that this is one version of doing this. Okay, at this point I am going to I just want to hide this guy. It doesn't necessarily matter if he's in there. I want to turn down the opacity just a little bit so that I can see and then zoom in so that I can really start to see the edges of what part of the flowers I'm going to mask out. Then I'm going to, while I'm on my mask layer, grab my brush, grab a sharp edge, 
make sure I'm turned up to 100% and 100%. And at this point, you're, it, depending on how you've set up your mask, I want to paint black to hide some of this white. Um, but if your mask is a little different, you know, vice versa. So always knowing which way. So I'm going to paint black. You can always test like, oh, yep, there he is. Okay, lots of different ways that you could do this. You could use this brush. You could use a polygon and then dump black paint into it. It's just how you're flowing. It all depends on what object you're actually working on. But this seems to get the job done pretty quickly for me. You could go in and make a really beautiful selection of something with, you know, your refine mask and save it and then utilize that when creating this mask. Cool, we're gonna pretend this whole letter dives all behind this letter and all behind this flower, and actually we're pretending that this flower sort of pops over on top of. We could have done something with that guy, but we'll leave him. And then this guy, we're going to dive in and cut him out. And you can see I'm not making a perfect cut. If at any point you have to fix something, you can always swap back. And there's some shortcut keys for that too. If you don't remember it, just swap it. I'll go back in and get that big grouping later. I'm just going to get my edge now. I don't love how that ends right there, but we're going to keep going. Okay. Good. Making bigger using my bracket, right bracket to make my brush bigger. And getting that out. Okay. Already almost there. At this point, you could turn this back up. We were utilizing that to see those flowers. Now, you could also cut out these flowers. Command J, make a new layer, layer him on top. And in some instances, that may make more sense to do it that way than this way. Um, so just, again, keep in mind, depending on the content you're trying to work with and how you're trying to make this happen, you may do something a little bit different. A um, couple more steps. Let's add a shadow layer. Shadow, we're going to change him, we think, to multiply, usually, although you'll see an instance where we're going to use a little bit different shortly um, and then we're just gonna go get a soft brush and paint some custom little shadows in there no big deal black we can always turn this guy down so dealing with black at first is no big deal and this is where you kind of want to you know really get in there and deal with this guy the way he would be now in my eyes, this petal is popping out more than that guy. And maybe even, maybe even, he starts to get a little bit where he needs to be sharper, you know, because he's closer. Maybe you even start to deal with a little bit of contact shadow, getting some of that custom shadow moment in there tight, looser, who knows. Let's keep going, back to black. You can always make those edits. And now it's hugging the, um, it's hugging the letters because we shape, we did a shape of letters with a mask. So in reality, let's, um, whoop, let's uh, ooh, deselect. Let's just disable this, and you can see how it's just, you know, we've got white, we've got that, we can't even see these things. So this mask is really, you know, what's doing it for us. Okay, at that point, let's pop this down a little bit, make it look more realistic. Awesome. Um, the word florist gets a little lost. Let's just go do a default drop shadow for this moment. Not a huge deal. Um, Here's a way you can do a shadow, and this comes into play in lots of different things. Command click, get that selection. Make a new layer. I'm going to bring him down. Actually, I'll leave him up here so you can see him happening, and then I'll move him. We'll dump black. He's there. He could be used for anything at this point. Command D to deselect. But, like, see what I mean? He's 
there. Um, he could be brought below this mask if we really wanted. He could be shifted and flipped. To get shadows that way. Like, there's a lot that could be done. Oh, and he had... Um, this cut out of him but that's okay because we're not really using him for that okay so he's down here let me pop him back just for the sake of this lesson back onto there I don't even mind that tiny little edge you could see where that could come into play in lots of different fun ways we are literally just going to oops sorry you can't see him but I'm going down 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 to the bottom hitting drop shadow checking it out and it's coming in as linear burn but when I looked at multiple, I was like, that's cool, but like every once in a while, like could I try a different one? It started to show some of those colors more. You can manipulate these different settings however you want and makes it look best. Um, you know, this is where you're just kind of using your artistic licensing to be smart and hit okay. Maybe that got too much. You can always go back in and drop it down and make it work that way. At that point, you can see how you could get a variety of things in. Maybe this shadow doesn't work for you. You can always come back in and repaint him back out so that that shadow doesn't exist there. That's no big deal, and it's very easy. On to that. Or if this shadow is what's bugging you, you can always mask him and take him off that way so keep that in mind Oops, sorry it's popping back into there we go and a hundred and you could work on painting some of that out oh with my drop shadow grab him dump dump there we go um, utilize folders when you need to. You could see that that was having some funky moments. If this guy was way in front, he wouldn't necessarily have that cast shadow onto him. So no big deal. Let's call him cast shadow, uh, text cast shadow. So we know what we're working with because that's different than that shadow. Oop. Text cast shadow. Close her up. Close her up. There's our main text. And now you're organized. Hit save. Make sure you're saving as. Give it your name and florist. And you see how easy you could utilize masks and text layers and custom shadows with either cutouts or masks. Either way can work um, to get some really cool looks. Hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions.